Okay, welcome again. And uh, we are now uh, welcoming Professor Stefan Huber in his keynote entitled uh, Recommendations for Working with the ISO Strategy School Development in the Balance of Innovation, Sustainability, and Optimization. Uh, Professor Stefan Huber is the head of research and development and the head of the Institute for the Management of Economics of Education at the University of Teacher Education in Switzerland. In addition to that, he is a member of different European institutions and he has contributed so much at the international level. In the name of the organizers, I am welcoming Professor Hubert in his keynote speech. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. And I'm very happy to share some of the reflections um, which we had uh, given to, to your request. Um, so I'm very sure that um, your members, your participants, we all share the same idea and insight that education is important. So to promote education quality for all seems an important effort uh, for us. So to focus on quality issues is important because we generate with um, children, with youth, with uh, young adults in our education institutions, the future society. And it's important for every one of the pupils, the students, uh, in terms of life satisfaction and job perspectives. Uh, it is also important from a society perspective, and we just realized, again, through various crises which, which we experienced in the last couple of years, whether it's the environmental crisis or the crisis about the democratic understanding, or it is about um, health issues, the pandemic, which we um, um, just were um, challenged uh, enormously uh, over the last couple of years. But it's also um, um, uh, now we experience a war and consequences of the war. So I would argue that education is important and a high um, quality of education is important to deal with challenges which we, are, which we are facing. Maybe education institutions are in the society and to the society. So um, to think about the quality of education for all and the role for each of the students and pupils and for the role in uh, uh, um, yeah, coping with societal changes is very important. And there are issues like the environment, which I just mentioned, and we can talk about that, how this impacts education quality and what has to be done in terms of education, or it is um, aspects of migration, integration, inclusion. We have a big project about that, how that changes um, educational institutions, issues of equity and equality, but also uh, the digital transformation which we are facing. And of course, education is important in terms of have been educated about digitality, so in terms of enlightenment, but it's also important because it changes learning environments. You can individualize, you can create interactivity, you can promote learning processes for what we call in Germany, Bildung, more a holistic uh, understanding as a process and a product um, of, of, of education. But then we also have aspects where students and pupils understand um, populism, democracy. Um, it's not only about knowledge or what we now call competences in terms of knowledge, skills, abilities, motivational, revolutional aspects to also demonstrate these competences, but it's also about values and a broader understanding of oneself within a community or a society. And this also has changed in many countries, this idea that education is networked on a, um, on a vertical and horizontal level um, because 
students go from educational institutions, they have different educators or educational settings, and that we have to create not only um, um, a coherence, but also um, cross level and, and, and cross sectional experiences in, in better education. So I would argue early childhood development is important as is primary and secondary and higher education. So it is important also that we discuss different concepts of what good education is or promising education or learning um, 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 uh, environments and how to teach and teach, um, as so didactic quality um, of, of this and as you see uh, it is important to share these insights to discuss and reflect and uh, to create concepts and um, to also implement these concepts, but it's also important in terms of policy that in terms of leadership and governance, these concepts are spread out. Um, it is not that I'm arguing for a very hierarchical approach. Um, I'm talking mainly about a concerted action, a coordinated um, idea um, and strategy. So given that education systems, and in your conference, we have different education systems represented, they are embedded in a cultural, historical, in a legal framework from a country. Um, we have different levels from national level to regional level. We have different kinds of organizations. We have different kinds of groups of students organized, and, and then we have individuals. And I think it is important to take this multi-level, the, the different forms of how we organize education into account when we talk about quality. It's not only about the micro level or the macro level, it's about all these levels and how they interplay for an individual pupil, how he or she experienced education or frictions between these kind of levels within her or his learning career, learning biography. So a very old idea um, um, is the idea um, that we have theories and, and, and it's about knowing and that we implement that into doing, into praxis. Um, and there are different authors uh, historically speaking, who talk about this kind of learning cycle. Um, and I would argue that within these kind of frameworks of, of learning and developing competences and inner knowledge, which is not enacted, and uh, it is a, a very important mechanism is reflection. Um, if you want to translate something from theory to praxis, you need to reflect, you need to adapt, you need to take the context into account. And so not only by that, but also by other examples, we have to think about meta strategies in learning environments. Um, I also would argue that for learning environments, um, we have to take different kind of strategies, learning strategies into account. Also for adult learning, we have to do that. There's of course classroom settings. There are there is uh, something where someone is taught, someone is lectured. There are settings where self-study. There is learning environments. There is coaching, shadowing, um, assessment, feedbacks. There are different types of of higher categories how you can uh, reflect of learning environments. And I would argue, it is not the one or the other. But from didactical aspects, sometimes if you have a certain aim, a certain topic, certain methods may be favored. And I think it's about an interplay of all these different kinds of things. What we also experienced in many countries over the last couple of years is the discussion about measuring the quality of education. So we had educational standards, we had inspection of educational institutions, 
also of industry growing in terms of measuring things. There was also a, a, a lot of discussion in many countries about decentralization, maybe even deregulation, but more often it was more decentralization that lower levels within the hierarchy of a system got more decision-making power. Unfortunately, not necessarily the necessary resources, but uh, there, there was a change uh, in this discussion of, of quality management and also that we have to see if we measure that certain aspects are not fulfilling the needed quality. So we also talked about failing pupils, failing learning settings, failing teachers, uh, educators, failing organizations. So we also had a big discussion in many countries about that. Um, from increasing the quality of education on all these kind of levels, I would argue that it is, uh, of course, a professional dialogue, that is a profound um, discussion, conceptual development and implementation, but it's also that we need a persistent approach. So professional, profound and persistent approach means that if we realize something, we cannot look away but have to enact and be consequent and and stay to the aspects which are important particular in the in the in the chain um, of of um, consequences if we think about impact when it comes to uh, the group and the individual learners and for that i think it is important when we talk about strategies to improve the quality or um, assure the quality that it's not only about the techniques, uh, the know-how, but it's very much about the know-why, that we need a discussion about sense, about benefits, that we talk about the things, why something is needed, and then how we can achieve that. So strategy is creating values, aims, um, having a scope, and then think about the strategies and, and implement the strategies which help to reach these aims by using as little as possible resources. So it's not only about effectiveness, it's also about efficiency. And I would argue that we have to think about not only the best practice, but also about next practices. And I would argue to use for this discussion, not only management models like input factors, process factors, and output and outcome factors, or mechanisms and tools where you think about a cycle, you do evaluate, you develop a strategy, you initiate change, you implement change, you institutionalize change, and then you come back to a diagnostic, you make strategy planning, and then you have like this quality management circle, but that we have to differentiate what is sustainable, what has been proven to be of high quality has to stay. So it's also not only about change or improvement or innovation, it's also about maintenance, about sustainability. And then there are things which we already do, which, are, which can be yeah, optimized, I would call it optimized. Um, and then there are other things where one as an educator or a group, my team or my organization is not doing. And this I would call innovation. And for every kind of diagnostic and strategy, it's important to differentiate what is the strength, what can be optimized, and what can be innovated. And for all this kind of strategic thinking and in the differentiation, it is important to set priorities and also to allocate the necessary resources given the priorities. And there you can have different strategies. One education organization can say, we want to focus on sustainability. And then most of the resources given, mainly time, uh, the time of the staff is focusing on sustainability, on the things which have already achieved in the education organization. If your focus is innovation, you would, for, would allocate a lot of resources to initiate, implement, and institutionalize something new to the organization, you would also have optimization, but you would focus less on the aspect of, of um, um, uh, keep the things you already have, which seem to be your strengths. 
So organization, educational organizations, but also we as educators can have different strategies in our institutional or personal professional life uh, uh, um, career. Um, and therefore, I think it is important not only to be aware what of oneself, the group or the organization is proven to be successful, is okay, but can be optimized or what has to be innovated, but also to think about where is the focus for the next couple of years. And then of course, if you innovate something, um, there's a, a process where you optimize and where you sustain. So there's also a, an idea. That's why I'm talking, that's why I talk in this aspect about contextual integration, a balance in resources, and then of course, a follow of sequences, if you think about certain things. To be successful in quality management, I think it is very important that this is a negotiated process, that persons, leaders, um, but also decisions need and be grounded in a high level of acceptance, need to be legitimized. Um, you need motivation of those who, who interact to work together but you also need people who have the necessary competences. So if we think about learning environments for others, we also have to think about learning environment for us as educators to increase the quality and to keep the quality which is needed. And last but not least, at uh, least it is uh, about the resources very often. And that's, uh, I'm talking only f uh, knowing certain countries and, and, reforms and innovation processes, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, for instance, very well. Um, you generate maybe the competence, but not necessarily motivation. Motivation competence is of course really interplace. Maybe you have it legitimized, but you don't allocate the resources needed to the reform, the innovation or what is needed. And then you create an imbalance. Uh, of course, you can use a metaphor saying all these factors um, are connected and correlated with a multiplicative um, connection. So if one variable is zero, zero all the others, the, the result will be zero. Uh, theoretically speaking, I will and I won't argue that all these aspects and probably depending on things you can differentiate even more are important. Communication strategy for all reforms, for everything needed, seems to be very, very important. What is blocking very often is in education reform and change process that we have too many reforms, too many changes in a, in a, in a, uh, in a sequence. And, um, and I use this metaphor, what happens if hens are kind of pushed up and, and, um, and steered up? Um, you know, the farmer says they are all fluttering around, you create kind of chaos. And uh, what happens after some time, they will sit down and they will sit down where they sat before. That's the farmer saying. So you created a lot of blind actionism, not necessarily improvement or innovation. But then someone said to me, a principal listening to one of my presentations, that's actually not true because hens are not so smart that they know where they sat before. What you create is a big chaos and then afterwards something different. And you can call that change, of course, but then it is important to see change is not necessarily inno innovation or improvement. It could also be change to the worse. So I think, responsible leadership needs to be analytic, professional, moral, and, and also strategic to focus innovation or, or um, a strategy. Yeah, so this was the first part of what I was asked to do. I also prepared a second part where I wanted to focus with our studies of the school barometer on what happened the last three years through COVID and the crisis we experienced. The school barometer is an instrument in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, which gathers data in a quantitative but also qualitative 
way with different actors, policy makers, superintendent, so super uh, in, in, inspection systems, um, um, authorities, um, teachers, other the focus um, in March 2020 uh, with participants with 25,000 participants from all these different actors a first survey being analyzed the data analyzed and out end of March beginning of April the first book was out on the 21st of April 2020 so in the framework of um, social response responsibility and um, responsibility and we tried to generate as quickly as possible information about what happens when schools get closed and shut down. So um, we have um, a very first result. You remember mid-March 2020 schools were locked down in uh, Professor Stefan, uh, do you have slides moving or just the first slide? Professor Stefan? I Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I changed all the slides. Did you see them? We don't see any slides changing. Um, I changed all my slides all the time. So I showed we have, we have the one 30, 40 can slides. You please, can you please reshare uh, the slides again? You make reshare and then it will continue. Can you see now the slides? Changing? No, stop, stop this current reshare uh, share, and then make reshare, make reshare again. Yes. Yeah, now we are in 25 because we did not see anyone with this. Yeah, but I cannot repeat what... I said I, I can share not, my PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, you will not repeat. We will we will show it again. No problem. Later. Okay, I I, I quickly go to the slides where I am. I I was actually in my slides all the time, and I saw them changing, and I also had the green sign up there that I was changing. But I hope you could follow my. Yeah, we followed your talk uh, in a very nice way, but uh, you know, we missed the slides. Yeah, but I will, I will share that. Yeah. So I was changing my slides every, every, every minute, something like that. So, but I, I will, I will go to the, the second part. The first result saw that when, when an educational institutions like the school were, were closed and shut down, learning did not stop. Actually, we, we see in average that um, pupils uh, still learned even when educational institutions were closed. We see that they also did a lot of other things being at home. But shocking was that this of course is only a mean score but if you look more closely, you see that one group learned even more than going to school. But there was another group who did not learn at all anymore or like did not do school-based activities. So what we see is and get reinforced that learners, students, pupils differ and that a situation like the crisis which we experienced actually promoted the differences which we already know about uh, to a, a very dramatic way. Um, so you see here one third um, did not 
too much for work. Uh, they did actually all the other activities also less than the others. They were quite passive students. The only activity which they did, and this activity they did four times than the other group, the green group, was playing on the computer. So the group who stopped doing education activities given by education organization in this context now schools um, uh, led that to the, to the fact that one is more um, increased teacher gain and decreased in other activities with the group very able morning students the family situation active and in contact with these pupils so we see that uh, maybe i can uh, have this model here i'm not sure whether this is integrated yeah here it is that we see that a lot of factors um, relate to the fact um, of uh, whether pupils were allocating time for learning and one group is of course the resources at home another group of factors is the environment, the learning environment by the education institution. But the strongest factors are actually those who are um, related to the person, the learner, him or herself. And that's of course age. The older they are, the more they 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 learned. And it's the combination related to the self. This was one fact. What we realized is that uh, we had differences between the countries in terms of digital competences, experiences, resources, um, hardware, software, and so on between the three countries studied. Uh, we also saw differences um, um, on, on national level, um, on motivation, skills, and experiences. And I would argue, um, particular. Um, as this was so, so clearly shown through the consequences of the pandemic, which we experienced, the, 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 the potential of digital learning uh, environments in terms of individualization on one hand, but also creating interactivity even in an asynchrone uh, mode um, is, is uh, something which is high on the agenda for education quality. So how to use technology to promote learning for all, but also to learn about digitality, I think is a very important topic. We see a lot of different effects over this period of our study. Here you see, unfortunately in German, um, a lot of quality factors which we examined. And what you see, um, a decrease in quality over a, a period of time. This is now over one and a half years. The quality never recovered to the status before the crisis. Yeah, you always see a decrease of quality when schools were locked down. And we can see that very clearly because in Switzerland, schools were not locked down anymore, but Austria and Switzerland. And there you really see a big difference in all different kinds of statistical examinations. What you also see this kind of movement, there was some kind of, of, um, improving the quality when schools were operating yeah but what you see always going up is digital competences because all tried hard to learn about digitality and the possibilities in education but also what was uh, what went up um, was uh, time efforts by educators and the experiences of strain over these two years so I think it's a, it's a challenge for um, leaders in education organization to create a balance of how can we further innovate and optimize our um, experiences or sustain the experiences and also create relief and stress reduction for those who experienced a lot of hard work the last two years, not only work, but also own family situations. Um, and uh, a lot 
of, of, of the things, the pandemic. So I think there is something for the leaders, but also for all educators on all the different levels to learn about the crisis and also to be very strategic, again, to be strategic, what comes next? What do we want to sustain? Where do we want to set a next level in optimization? Where do we want, because we heard others were doing this innovation the last two years, can it also be something for us, given the resources we have? So there you are. Education put some more aspects of what we found out with the school barometer. There were interesting experiences in some countries like China, how they set up within a couple of weeks um, TV stations for each class level. Uh, um, and and um, yeah, I think there's a lot to learn for us as educators. So um, thank you very much for listening uh, so far. There are some links uh, Okay, um, do you hear me? Every year we have September and link. So if you want to get in touch with me, Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Professor Huber. So uh, we will open now the platform for uh, your questions for both on-site and uh, online. If you have any question for people online, you just write or open the mic for people on site. They can go to the mic and ask their, their questions. Uh, good afternoon, Professor Huber. Good afternoon. My name my name is Lasha Singh. I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs at American University in Emirates. Uh, greetings from Dubai. Uh, <laughs> greetings from Berlin, Germany. Very interesting. Uh, I have one question, uh, which might be a little bit, uh, probably I seek your inputs, I seek your help. So as an institution, if we want to integrate the sustainability and innovation strategy, in our operations, let's say, so that you know we can realize it. Uh, what kind of input you will provide to a higher education institution, medium-sized higher education institution? Uh, what steps they should take? Uh, how they can materialize this? How they can put in action so that it students that miss missing in many of the higher education institutions. Yeah. So what advice uh, with your expertise, what kind of advice you would yeah. like to provide? Um, I'm not sure it's an advice. Uh, maybe it's just a reflection. Um, I see that in many other branches, we develop And I say that country of course or a university, um, there are a lot of tools and techniques out, and, and some fit better to a specific context and some not. But what is in common and helpful is if you create a reflection an individual as a group reflection on various levels within the organization that you create an awareness that quality matters, that to invest time matters. 
Um, but it's not only about more and more and more, it's also about being smart to, to set priorities. In many organizations, which I follow up in different projects, innovation projects on national level, regional level, and so on, most often there is something new and this has to be enacted additionally. And of course, everyone says there's more and more coming. Sometimes it's good communicated. Most often it's really badly communicated and people don't understand why. They understand what has to be done, but not why. But most often they are not interested how it has to be done because they don't understand why. And then it just in neo analytic form, it just doesn't happen. So if you create a dialogue, a reflection that everyone, every member in the organization, no matter who, who, which role this person is, reflects for himself and maybe also keeps it for him or for herself. What is my ESO? What direction I can go for? What is my strength? What I have to keep? What are the things I'm already doing, but I can do a little bit smarter, a bit more efficient, and then set priorities within all the three lists. And then you can do that as a group and they can share to a certain degree the individualistic perspectives, but not too much pressure. You think about the group. What do we do as a group? Which is, and then you do this even on a higher level. So if you have a, on all your organization, how you're organized, a dialogue about ISO. Um, and then you create very a clear picture where motivation lies and what are the next steps and where the potential is to increase quality, but also where the, the strengths are to keep the quality. Um, this is what I would do. And I would not do it as a bureaucratic exercise, but as a smart, low, easy, let's do that. And groups can do that. Individuals can do that within a framework, but you have to say, now we are doing this. This is the workshop we are doing it. And then you have a series of like two, three workshops with the different levels. So, and each invests a bit of time reflection. Most often he has group himself and then the level he's operating. And that create like a very cool, um, rich information for strategic behavior. And again, then certain decisions have to be taken, setting priorities. And then people understand it's not only about more and more and add on and add on, but it's about we set priorities. We keep the demands to the resources we have. We create opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It is really useful. Thanks. Thank you very much for the question. Any other question? I have one question, uh, Professor Hoover. When it comes to the educational system in both Switzerland and Germany, what is unique about when it comes to quality assurance and, you know, uh, what is going on in the school system? Uh, about Germany, Austria, and Switzerland? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a very simple question. I would probably repeat what I just said. We need a professional dialogue, not a top-down dialogue, not by haters. Uh, we, we need a dialogue on all these levels to create strategies. I would argue, for instance, for Germany, which is a federal um, uh, uh, country where education lies um, in autonomy to each state, we need a national strategy. We cannot keep it just to each state. So, but of course, you need a strategy in each state. And of course, you need a strategy within each education region. And you need a strategy for each institution, um, educational institution. So I would talk about a multi-level strategy. That means a national strategy or a federal or state-oriented strategy can determine priorities given the, the, the state. So for instance, for Bavaria, because you said you, you, you are at the moment um, um, in Bavaria, in Ulm. So then I would argue it's important for a ministry and a minister in Bavaria to set clear goals what in Bavaria is important in the next one, two, three years, given 
in the situation in Bavaria, we have a lack of teachers. Um, a well in a situation where this is our aim. And then the institutions, no matter what, what level, basic or secondary or higher, they can create what can they do given their resources, their situation, we have differences in quality, what can be their contribution with their learners to, to follow up. So they do a more differentiated, refined strategy. Yeah, I think that's, that's um, it all sounds a bit abstract, but if it comes to the goals and the means, it's very concrete actually. Yeah, and of course, for all of us, what I said, we have to think about equity, about equality. We have to think about that we take all learners. Yeah, also the ones who are more disadvantaged because of maybe family um, factors. Uh, one thing is we have to create our nations. Yeah, not one nation, but all nations in democratic understanding. Uh, we have to, to see that we have to cope a lot of difficulties is this lack of teacher, lack of resources. Is it uh, coping with crisis? We need resilience. We have to all work on our resilience. It's the strain I experience as a person, but also the stress we are as, as, as a, a, a group of teachers experience in one school. We have to think about health management, to be honest. And, uh, and um, then it's, I think a, a really big demand is digitalization. Um, there's, there will, it will change education so much over the next couple of years. Um, I fear it is so much about individualization, personalized learning. There is, if we only focus on this challenge to have flow learning experiences, we lack one big um, opportunity and that's collaborative environments. Digital uh, technologies allow a lot of working together. Yeah. So I think we need to balance digital change and integration in learning environments according to educational aims and combine interactivity and individualization that it is not either or, but end. Yeah. And do you think we can cope with now a huge diversity when it comes to immigrants from different origins? Um, what is the alternative? I mean, the, uh, when we have now uh, like a number of large number of immigrants, you know, and refugees. So how could we cope with diversity and, uh, you know, uh, different uh, origins? Yeah, I would say to create good learning environments because most often good learning environments help the individual, but also the group and to make use of the, the differences. There's always diversity. First, it's uh, for persons creating learning environments because they have to differentiate. But once you understand that some are good in this and not so good in that, and they can, you know, learning, learning through teaching was a very strong teaching strategy and learning strategy. I don't know when it was in the 50s, 60s, 50, 70 years ago. We, we said we learn the moment I help someone else to understand, because then you have to create deeper learning for yourself. And so diversity can, can create that. Uh, it's not only about streaming that you have the same abilities, to, yeah, which you can still do. But if, if you integrate that, that people, that students learn from and with each other, you create a very strong learning environment. So diversity, of course, um, also cost resources. It creates resources if you do it um, education oriented in an intelligent way. Thank you so much. So I think we will conclude this session now. And Thank you very much. Uh, in the name of the uh, conference organizers, I would like to uh, say thank you, Professor Stephen, uh, Stefan Hover for this interesting uh, talk.